Good evening. This is the Elliott Wave update for the NASDAQ 100 for Tuesday, June 28th, 2022. Quite a turn of events today. Uh, and I've added a little bit of labeling, which could take two things. So let's dive in. Let me get to it. Uh, daily, still basically the same, same pattern. I'm running it with the intermediate one, two versus intermediate A, B. And the basis on that is that even if we're in the C wave, I would still think we could have a very crushing C wave right about now. And that would suggest this could still be a minor first wave. So I can count down the five and put a minor one under it versus changing these to minor and then putting an intermediate C under it. I don't believe that that's the case, but yet to come, it's still there. I'm leaving it as a minor one, but the other is still there. The market needs to tell us we can go with one side or the other, but there's nothing that I can do or say other than present it so that it's not a surprise should it be the case. Um, so again, it all goes along with what I talk about in terms of that what we need to attempt to do is to be able to trade without bias. So we don't have a bias towards bullish or bearish. We don't have a bias for the market to go up or down. In fact, in all honesty, with that, with that tool of not trading with a bias, it truly just allows us to capture the moves no matter what direction they're going. So what I'm attempting to do is to put together what I believe is a picture that when we break it down to a day-to-day -day basis, we have opportunities and we understand what to look for when the market is intending to um, exert more of a trend, either in the upside or the downside directions. So trading without bias has a lot of merit. It allows us to take a look and just go, I'm going with the flow. And that's important because yesterday, yesterday was a day that showed some of the change. And I'll drop down to the hourly quickly so that I can just continue this conversation. That we reached the high yesterday in Globex. So it was overnight. Sunday to Monday, it was overnight. And that was at 12,262. So that's where I'm marking wave C, but I'm not labeling above this because what I could put above this is a possible minor two. And if that's the case, this is gonna kick in and kick butt. Now it did today. I have to be honest on an intraday basis on the hourly chart, it was very strong down. And once it got cooking and got going, it was not going to be stopped. And it just, it just walks its way down. And when you're looking at a chart, it seems like, oh, it's all very scrunched up. And But when we open the charts up, you can see these strong hours of downside action. We had one hour at noon Eastern where they actually produced a green barn that was perfect because we needed it to relieve what was then a pretty strong uh, downside oversold, very, very near term, but oversold. So that did that. It also kept the uh, legacy EMA, the 200 in play, broke it. We got a little bit of acceleration, accelerated back up, got failed right at it, and then just followed through. And that was you know the three hours of stronger downside. And what this is leaving us with is basically a, a one and a two, or one, two, either or. This did push to a new high, small, but a new high nonetheless, over what we saw overnight. So in Globex, it produced a new high above Globex, which is 12,164, we'll call it. This got to 12,174. So it did put in a new high. And if that's going to be one, two, or is it A, B? 
and we're doing a C wave. And then this is going to be wave B, this is wave A, this is wave B, then we get a C wave up to finish that minor two. Yes, that still is out there. Yes, the market still has some proving. Yes, today did go far in really demonstrating that the sellers may be back and this rally is done. This corrective bounce is done. That does exist. Now we're waiting for additional signals from the market that that is the case. And that's going to come with us breaking this 200 SMA, which is at 11,635. So both the EMA and the SMA carry weight here because you can see both are watched. And now we've got this one up. So my take is that if it breaks it and we get it strong enough, it's going to do the same thing as what it did here. Just do it again here. And that just really fulfills a lot. We're looking for a continuation of a third wave. And if indeed one, two, we're getting a third. As we begin to unfold in that larger leg down. And so that fits on either view that I run parallel with each other. We still can expect some very strong downside, whether it's a fifth wave or whether it's a third. And whether that's a fifth of you know, a C wave or whether it's a third of a third type of a move. So we're in an interesting place. And the market now needs to show us. I was going to say something else, but I thought, no, I won't go there but it has to do about something about getting off the pot. In any case, um, what can we look for for tomorrow? I would intend to think that we are likely gonna see some additional downside. Let me just take a quick peek to see what, if anything, is going to be coming up tomorrow. We have GDP tomorrow morning. So if GDP does not come out rosy, favorable, looking great, got your back type stuff. I believe the market just continues to go down because the reality takes a step forward and buying it will could be met with stronger downside, like, you know, stronger resistance, like, no, 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 we're not doing that. Um, and that, so we'll wait, we'll see. But we're looking for that break below 11,635 to give us additional confirmation. If that breaks, our downside support starts to space out here. So going back out to that daily chart, what we're seeing on these Fibonacci's are the, uh, for the bounce that we just are coming out of. If the bounce is going to intend to be higher, so that's why I'm leaving them up because this could be A and that could be B and then we have a C wave. That is, the other side of this coin, right? Downside, it's there. The reality is there. We start to break below here. We don't have much. We, we have 11,333, then we have 11,120, and then 11,068, and then it's off to the races, get out of the pool. Because then we start to break down. Then we start, now we're looking at, at these outer, Fibonacci's, 10,673, 10,500. We're looking and a, a decent, like bad, bad, bad situation really could throw a wrench into the spokes because it's all there and it all can happen. And it just depends on what it, the market needs to react to, what could teeter. So it truly is on that brink, either... And in all honesty, in both cases, if this thing decides it's going to stop, go up, and fulfill that larger, uh, that other picture that I was showing for upside, and actually do a move that takes us to 12,700 to 13,000, because folks, it has to stay out there. I'm not saying it's going to happen by any mean, but if I don't talk about it and it does come up, it's like, oh, where were you? So that's the other side of the coin. The market will tell us. Truly, the market will tell us. So that would be the upside, that this turns into an ABC. So that's our break, and our break was showing that we have 
full potential should it occur that it's going to pick up enough steam to eventually get us below 11,068. That would be my feeling behind it. Will it happen all tomorrow? I doubt it. Having said that, I open the door. How about that? But if it doesn't, and we get an ABC and the market turns and goes higher, it's going to break back above the 200s. And if it's below the 200s, it's going to break back above the 4, the 20, the 8, the 50, and just turn and just go. And it truly has to do it without, it has to do it with total conviction, total 100% conviction that we're right and we're doing it. So no messing around. I thought that, that actually was going to be the case this morning. Because the, the first leg was like a quick, a quick slice down, and then they just walked in and they bought it and they bought it and they bought it and they bought it and they bought it. And, we, and it was just straight. It wasn't pausing, a little pause and move, a little pause and move, but it was basically just very go. So with that in mind, that's what I would expect to see. And, and it can happen. There's a still, we've got reallocation we've got the end of the quarter tomorrow and thursday it's the end of the quarter and on top of all that my friends it could be climactic because we also have a holiday weekend coming up again so i know it's only tuesday we gotta get to friday but at the end of that rainbow three-day weekend and hopefully you're living someplace where it gets warm and sunny so there you have it in any case, both sides covered right now. We have potential to go up, but for either side, we're also at a spot where if it's going to kick higher, it's got to go. If it's going to kick lower, it doesn't have to like snap your fingers and flop. It likely will do it. So to prove upside, they just got to take out all of this pushing that just took place today and roll right over it. Convince the sellers. It's like, stand back. We're going up and you'll get a better price. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna leave it there. Moving averages, they are your friend. And our next update will be on the 29th.